Hi everyone, Stephanie here. Today I would like to give my impressions of reading the book called Shifting the Balance. I want to first recognize the authors for their commitment to helping teachers move towards the science of reading. Uh, anybody who chooses to write a book is um, a hero in my opinion. Uh, it takes a lot of sacrifice, I'm sure, and um, a lot of persistence to get something published. Uh, and, and it's clear that the authors are interested in moving teachers towards the science of reading. But I think you can tell by the title, Shifting the Balance, that these are authors who are rooted in balanced literacy. They say so much in their introduction. Uh, you can see in their backgrounds that, that that's really um, what they value and what's at the heart of their work. So I also give a lot of credit to anybody who is changing their mindset uh, away from what they were taught, away from practices they've implemented, away from perhaps what they have taught other people to do, as I think is the case for these authors. So I, I give folks a lot of credit for making those kinds of changes. I think that's really admirable. But I want to give a couple of reactions and a couple of cautions. Um, the first four chapters of this book, I think, are very, very helpful. Uh, they are about making changes to the way that teachers might view comprehension as the starting place. And, and they put comprehension in its proper perspective as the goal of reading instruction. They go into phonemic awareness. They cover phonics and how to teach high frequency words. And their summary of the research in those first four chapters, I think, is, is helpful. Uh, I think it's well done. I would say that it provides a really nice, high-level, sort of light-touch introduction to what's in the reading research. And I have no qualms with those first four chapters. It's when we get to chapters five and six that... Um, I want to offer some some chap some cautions. So chapter five, um, what the authors do is they they make a comparison between the MSV model and they rework it to what they think is representative of the simple view of reading. And I think this is really inaccurate. Um, I think it largely leaves out the entire contribution of of language structures to what it means to become a reader. Uh, the focus in that chapter is really on using visual cues to a greater extent than perhaps what had been done in some balanced literacy classrooms. And reading is not a visual activity. So I think overemphasizing or encouraging teachers to, to focus on, um, you know, reading, signaling students to read the entire word uh, really is missing out on the entire speech to print connection, the, the code based instruction that needs to happen for beginning readers and the emphasis on mapping phonemes and graphemes together. Um, so I think that's a, that's a missed opportunity and it's really um, a misrepresentation of at least my understanding of the reading research or the simple view of reading in particular. The second caution I would have is the uh, way that the authors have reworded decodable text. They've come up with this new new term um, that I have to, to look at to, to remember. Um, I think it's aligned text, perhaps. Um, and they say that text for reading instruction, beginning reading instruction should be aligned to the student's needs. And they contrast it with, sorry, I, I should have remembered this. Um, they contrast it with um, text that um, could be read in other ways, uh, read in other ways text, or um, read all the words text. And that just rubs me the wrong way. Um, we should read all the words in all text that, that students are reading. And what's wrong with the term decodable text? I know maybe it has some bad connotations. There can be inadequate decodable text. You wanna choose wisely, but let's just call it what it is. What we should be teaching beginning readers is decoding. And we use decodable text to practice the decoding skills, the phonics patterns that we have directly taught them. 
in a cumulative way in connected text. It's not the only text we use in the classroom, but we shouldn't be afraid of calling it what it is, decodable text. I think their new terminology uh, aligned text is, is just not helpful, it's not needed. Um, and to me, it really reveals um, in that section that they're very, the authors are very rooted in spending a lot of time in beginning reading classrooms with independent reading, letting cho students choose from like book boxes or book bags, um, independent choice about what students read. And I think that's a different issue from what we do in reading instruction, in small group reading instruction where decodable text would be used. So to me, those are, those are two mismatches that really um, I would draw your attention to and caution you on about this book, their, their representation of um, MSV into the simple view of reading just doesn't work for me uh, because of their emphasis on the visual part of reading. Uh, and then also this, this issue around decodable text or what they're calling aligned text. And then my, um, my final reaction is kind of a general sense that I got from reading this entire book. And I, I didn't really like the way that they treated teachers as being very fragile, almost like learning about the science of reading was traumatizing for teachers. Now, I know what they're getting at. Uh, I have worked with many teachers, especially the ones uh, through my work in uh, graduate programs. I've worked with many teachers who have this, this really emotional, and rightly so, emotional reaction to learning that there's an entire body of evidence that has been withheld from them about the science of reading. And once they hear that, there's a variety of emotions that teachers respond with, and again, rightly so. They're angry, they're sad, they're frustrated, uh, they, they feel responsible uh, and regretful about their past practice. And, and, and that's a flood of emotions that's, that's very real. But the, the tone of this book was sort of um, treating teachers as if they're very fragile and uh, not able to handle the, the truth, so to speak. And I just don't find that to be the case. I find that once teachers are aware of some, some evidence about how we could teach reading in a way that's more effective and get more students to become readers, they're excited. They wanna know right away, what, what do I do? And I think that's a place that this book falls short. It's a little short on implementation and, and um, the deep level of understanding that teachers need to take that next step and implement what is in the science of reading. So I just didn't care for that, um, that attitude. That's just my opinion. That's the way I read the book. Um, that there's this fragility that teachers have about making this, this change. And I think it comes through in the, in the title uh, and in some of the, the phrases that are used in this book, uh, you know, that, that we, uh, the authors say that they're, they're sort of clinging to the notion of balance in literacy instruction and that they wanna build a bridge. And I get that, we need, we need to as quickly as possible make this information available to teachers and allow them to move away from their old ineffective practices, in many cases, to more effective reading instruction. But it's not really a footbridge that we need to build. We need to build a, a, a high-speed rail that gets them from point A to point B. So I, I thought I would suggest some alternatives if you're looking to make this kind of a change to your, to your knowledge and to your reading practice. Uh, I like to recommend Lynn Stone's book, Reading for Life. I think this is a very easy, accessible starting place. Um, I recently came across, again, um, this book from, oh, I don't know, more than 20 years ago that probably needs an update, but this is also a really nice introductory uh, presentation of what is in the reading research. And I think anybody who is looking to make a change to their instruction in reading really needs to read Anita Archer and Charles Hume's book, Explicit Instruction. Uh, this is a must have, I think, for every reading teacher, not just in the primary grades. Um, so those would be some that I would recommend. I have a full reading list, 
on my download page and I'll put a link below this video so you can access that. Um, again, kudos to the authors for writing this book. Just my personal opinion in reading it cover to cover, um, some cautions, some reactions. And uh, honestly, the information in those first four chapters, you can access free from their website. And that might be a better way for you to at least get an introduction to what you would be getting if you purchase the book.